Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am Veronica Valdez, and I currently serve as the director of the Minority and Small Business Capital Programs for Enterprise Florida. Welcome to the Minority and Small Business Boot Camp. Many of you all have been with us for all six sessions. Whether you've been with us for all six sessions or this is your first session, we want to welcome you to the team. We thank you for taking this boot camp journey with us. A few house rules before we get started. Number one, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A section. We know that you can put them in the chat and we'll do our best to get to them, but it's a little easier to keep track if you put them in the Q&A section. Number two, very important, we bring the webinar. We only ask you to do one thing, bring the energy. When you're in the chat, we want to know we've got small business owners from all around the state. Let us know what city you're repping. For example, I'm going to start. I live in Orlando, Florida. I'm born and raised in Miami. So I still rep 305. We want to know where you're from. Bring us the energy. And last but not least, this is session number five, session number six. We still have five sessions to go. If you're enjoying yourself, if you're getting a lot of resourceful information, don't keep it to yourself. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. All the sessions are recorded and you can feel free to go back and watch any sessions that you have not watched. So moving right along, everyone on this call, we understand why the boot camp journey is so important. But let me remind you in case you've forgotten, it's so important because small businesses are so important. In court, according to SBA, over the past 20 years, small businesses have created 10 and a half million new jobs, whereas large businesses have created five and a half million new jobs. Folks, the numbers don't lie. We must always keep in mind that every large business, you know what, was once a small business. So at Enterprise Florida, we wake up every day, we come to the office with a couple of things in mind. And one of those are small businesses. We assist minority and small businesses all around the state, giving them resources integral for, for growth. We really do that in three ways. One-on-one -on -one consultations to educate small businesses about options. Everybody likes options. Options for development, options for training, and yes, options for capital programs. The second way we help is through our loan support programs. We often give lenders the incentive to loan capital to small businesses when they otherwise might not feel so comfortable doing so. And last, but certainly not least, we're able to help through our strategic partners. They allow us to strengthen our outreach, our commitment to outreach each and every day in ways like the Haitian American Business Leader Summit, which we were fortunate to host earlier this year in January. As you can see, we had 175 participants, nine speakers, all of Haitian American descent, and we're most proud of the opportunity that we had to partner with the Haitian American Chamber of Commerce of Florida. That was just the first step in many steps in engaging the Haitian American business community. But it doesn't stop there. This Wednesday, a week from today, we will host the Caribbean American Business Summit. Yes, folks, you guys are some of the first people to hear about it. This will be Wednesday, June 23rd from 1.30 to 4.30. You see the link at the bottom of the screen. You can register for that right now. I want you to remember three things. It's free. It's virtual and it's Wednesday. Not only will each participant enjoy two high power workshops, start and grow your business in Florida, as well as scale your business through export and international trade, but also we'll have business testimonials from some of the most esteemed business owners around the state of Caribbean American descent. So we want you in the building. But you know what? Today is not about any of those. Today is about starting your marketing strategy. So with no further ado, 
I'm going to pass the baton to at EFI, we call him our leader. He's one of the hardest working men I know in the state of Florida. He goes around the country helping to recruit some of the most promising businesses to guess where? The state of Florida. He travels around the state sharing and visiting with minority and small business owner because he truly wants them to feel committed. I think he's most proud of his service as a United States Marine but I'm most proud of the fact that he's a Florida Gator. Secretary Sal, the baton is yours. Thanks so much. Um, I know you said to give some shout outs. So I see everybody from around the state, 941-954-772-386. And I also see some uh, old friends of mine here that I've known since college. My college roommate, Jarvis Grace is on here. I see an old friend of mine, Dr. Amanda Wilkerson. I'm just going through names of people who I have not seen in years. So I'm, I'm excited about the energy, uh, whether it's um, Ian Fletcher. And as I go down the list, it excites me because there's people from all around the state. Um, Kavisha Moore in Sarasota and people who I've known since uh, back when I had hair. So many, many years ago. But I think that uh, this is exciting because we're at a pivotal moment uh, with the summer series because everybody knows that representing your brand is pivotal for success. Marketing isn't just about advertising, it's about conveying the narrative of who you are, what you and your business stand for, and your values. Marketing is what endures customers to you and makes them loyal to your services. At Enterprise Florida, we just want to be a small portion of your success by helping you grow. So whether that story is one of being from overseas, from being from out of state, but coming to Florida, we wanna make sure that you have the tools needed to succeed but also the tools needed to tell the world about how great your business is as you grow and have more employees for the state of Florida. As you know, Veronica's background, she's the best at um, making sure everybody's engaged, everybody's involved. From her background as a lawyer to running a nightclub, she always brings the energy, she brings the passion and I'm so glad uh, for her efforts. So I wanted to thank you all for being here and all of our partners with SBDC, um, Florida Department of Management Services, and our great speaker today, Adriana Matarin, and she is has a, a vast wealth of knowledge, and I look forward to learning from her. Thank you, and I'll pass it on to the next speaker. She on mute. Good morning, everybody. I'll start that over again. So bringing you energy here from Tallahassee, Florida. Thank you, Veronica, for setting the tone. And thank you, Secretary Saul, for kicking us off. I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to join you today. Um, again, Tammy Filio from the Florida Department of Management Services. Um, thank you, Enterprise Florida and also Florida SBDC for your partnership and hosting this fantastic Minority and Small Business Bootcamp series. We're very excited to be a part of it and be an uh, uh, organization of support. Um, from, from in Florida, um, native Florida's low tax and business friendly state continues to make us the best place to start and grow your business. And under the Governor DeSantis administration, our office here, um, Department of Management Services, we have an office of supplier diversity that help certify Florida-based minority women and veteran-owned businesses. And the goal is to create new opportunities for diverse businesses to grow and strengthen our state because small businesses are the backbone of the state of Florida. Uh, we work together with our sister agencies to connect our businesses with the resources available, whether that's helping them open their doors to creating sustainable growth and resiliency and keeping your doors open even if there's natural disasters. And our OSD team, if you have not had a chance to interact with him, is led by our fantastic executive director, Bruce Roberts. He has a wealth of knowledge and experience working with the state of Florida and is also a, a military, has served in the military himself. He is joining us today live and is available to chat with you and answer any questions that you might have. So excellent opportunity today. Bring your game to it, like Veronica said. Thanks for joining us this morning. And if you wanna learn more about doing business with the state of Florida or certifying your small business, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We wanna be a resource for you. Thanks everybody and have a great morning.
Hi, everyone. My name is Beverly Byers. I'm the Director of Strategic Partnerships for the Small Business Development Center Network uh, here in Florida. And we are so proud of our continued partnership with Enterprise Florida and the Department of Management Services on this exciting webinar summer series. Uh, we're especially proud of today's webinar where we'll learn from Adriana, who is a fantastic consultant with our office, the Florida SBDC at Florida International University. Uh, as the state designated principal provider of small business assistance, consultants like Adriana provide consulting, training, and research services to help our state's small businesses grow and succeed. And uh, we're here to help empower minority and small business owners with the tools and connections necessary for them to continue to be successful. So again, we're just very excited to continue to be a part of this, this webinar series. We know that our state small businesses have faced unprecedented challenges over the last year. And as we head into hurricane season, uh, we're here to continue to support our state small businesses to be resilient veterans of disasters. And uh, if you need more in-depth assistance on any of the topics of this series, please visit our website, floridasbdc.org to find a consultant near you. We're all across the state from Pensacola to Key West. So without further ado, I think I'm passing the floor over to Adriana. Thank you very much, Veronica. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm happy to be with all the partners, Secretary So It's a pleasure to be here with you, Tammy also. And, and Beryl, it's great to, to be here and share something else within these webinars. So as they say, my name is Adriana Madrinan. And I work for the SBDC at, at FIU specifically. There are nine SBDCs, as Tammy said, uh, as, uh, sorry, as Beverly said, across Florida. And our role is to give you consulting. So you can access us uh, for any consulting in any area that you need. So today I'm going to talk specifically about marketing, how to start your marketing strategy. Let me share the presentation. So you can all see the slides. Okay. So how to start your marketing strategy. And uh, we will be talking about eight steps that will help you create your marketing strategy at the end of the presentation. You all have access to the uh, uh, handouts of the slides. You will both receive them via email or at the end, I have a QR code that I will wait so you can Try download it with the QR code if you want. And I also am including one pager, so one exercise that you can apply everything you will learn today. So as, as Veronica said, please, please put your questions in the Q&A section. The reason it's so important that you put it in the Q&A section is because we can answer sometimes even directly on the Q&A question. But if you put it in the chat, we cannot answer your questions directly. In, we cannot type answers if we need. Also, when you put your questions related to, market, uh, to marketing, please include what type of business are you in and who's your client? Because every marketing strategy is different depending on your business and your client. So that will really help me to answer better your question. So let's start. So we're going to talk about eight steps to start your marketing strategy. The first step you need to be very aware is why. Why you do what you do. You, the, at the end, you decide where your business is going and you need to have a plan. So that's what we're gonna do today. A plan, plan to acquire new business for where you wanna take your business. So, so sorry, to, acquire more, to acquire more clients, either business or uh, clients. So the whole heart of your marketing strategy is rooted in two things, your business objective or business objectives and your marketing objective or marketing objectives. If you don't know where you are going, then you are wasting your money in marketing. So the most important thing is to have very clear where you wanna take your business. At the end, the marketing overall game plan is by, to reach more people or businesses so you can turn them into customers. That's why we're doing marketing. So I really want you to be aware of these three layers. The top layer of any business is the business strategy. You need to have clear where you're taking your business. 
So if you haven't done it yet, I really recommend, I'm sure you have seen a lot of classes in the, in the recent webinars, but really think where do you wanna take your business in the, within, in, within one year? So by summer of 2022, where do you wanna take your business? Based on that business strategy is where you are gonna start making your marketing strategy. Then there will come the tactical action. So if you do a Facebook or if you put an Instagram, that's tactical actions, okay? Today, we're gonna make the plan, the marketing plan, the big vision. So as I said, you have your business today. It's very important that you know where you're gonna take your business in the future. Some business can project up to three or more, three years usually lately, but since COVID really changed the way we do things, sometimes it's more difficult. So try to make it, even if it's six months, if you can visualize your business six months ahead, then your marketing will be better because then you will be driving your marketing to where you wanna go. So I at least a year, but if you can, just envision some months ahead. So as I said, uh, earlier, your business goal, your marketing goals will always mirror your business goals. So, and believe me, I worked 10 years in an advertising agency where with huge multinational corporations and whenever they didn't have a clear business goal, they wasted so much money. So that not only happens to small business, but it happens to big business too, when they are not aware that marketing is really dependable on your marketing goals are totally dependable on your, on your business goals. When you write your marketing goals, it's important that you are aware that you have to put away like to measure those goals. There are two ways when you write them, either it could be qualitative. So maybe you wanna be a trailblazer um, in your industry. So that's more qualitative. It's more difficult to measure, but at least you're setting a standard of uh, where you want to be and quantitative, where you can put a number. So I want to increase sales by 10%. That's a quantitative number. So make sure you write your marketing goals and you have an objective that you're going to measure. So if your goal is, a, if your business goal was for a year, then your marketing goals, you should review it in a year to make sure yet you accomplish whatever you want to do. You don't want to invest in marketing and then never know if it worked or if it worked or didn't work. So that's why it's very important that you set up your goals and you describe it. After you know why, then the next step is who. So who are your clients? And that's what we call the target market. So uh, we need to do, know from those clients, either if they're um, directly people or business, what are their needs, their pains, and their gains. So who is, who's your target market? Who are we trying to reach? So to do that, it's very important also that you are aware in which type of business you are. Are you in the business to consumer business? Uh, business? So that means that you are a business and you sell directly to people. Are you in the business to business? That means that you are a business and you are selling to other business. The consumer to consumer is more what we call marketplaces. It could be also a marketplace where business sell to consumers like Amazon. You can be a business, you use the marketplace of Amazon and then you sell to consumers. But many times like Airbnb, what they do is they put two groups of consumers together. The ones that have the houses with the ones that want to rent the houses. So that's a marketplace. Or you can also do business with government and that's uh, B2G. So let's start with business to consumers. When you are doing marketing in business to consumers, what you really want is two, three things. Either you are satisfying a need of those consumers, you are solving a problem, or you are making them feel good. So it's important that you know with your product and service what you deliver in these three areas. When you are in the business to business, what you satisfy are three different things. Either you are helping the, the, your clients, the businesses, to increase revenue, or you are helping those businesses to maintain the status quo. For instance, if you provide ink, what you are making sure is that they can run fluently. I have a client, for instance, that only sells needles 
um, for the medical medical needles. And, and at the end, it's a, a product to help the, to maintain the status quo. You need the needles to make your office work. And finally, the, the third option that um, you sell to business to business is to decrease expenses. So if I, if I have any product or service that will help you decrease your expenses, uh, like um, maybe I have a way to reduce the consumption of energy. So that will be a, a service or a product that I can offer to decrease expenses. So it's important also that you know your products and service, what will satisfy in those uh, businesses. When we talk about the marketplaces, it's very important that we analyze the two sides of the, of the business. We will have to be very aware of the, both the buyers and the sellers. So in this case, we will have to analyze both, both type of clients. Finally, in the business to government, it's usually because you have a product or a service that an agency or an institution requires. And, and yes, the government buys, and, and I know by fact that even wigs, uh, they can buy anything that there are many things that they need, either because they need it for an agency institution or because there is a grant that they, they offer to help source any um, entity, so, so yes, they, they, they acquire and they require a lot of products and services. Once you know in which business you are and, and your market segment, it's important to measure it. So you need to know what size is, is, is your market. And it, it depends. Many of you are doing export. So that means that you meet, need to measure where are your clients, maybe if you are selling um, in the Caribbean and you're attending the webinar, the meeting next week. So you need to know how big is your market there. You may sell only locally. If you are a restaurant, what is important is to know the size of your market is usually around your restaurant. So no, it's rarely that people would drive miles and miles to go to your restaurant unless you are amazing and then people just come to your restaurant. But usually your normal clients will be what we call the farm. So they, the people that live around your restaurant. Maybe you only sell to Florida, or maybe you sell to the whole US, or you sell to a specific segments, only to elderly. So it's important that you really measure the size of your segment. Once you have done that, the third step is what? The what step is what makes you different. So to know what makes you different is fundamental that you know your competitors and you know your capabilities. So yes, we need to know our competitors to, to benchmark ourselves and the capabilities. What are you really good at? Uh, so really you, then doing that exercise, you will find what makes you unique. So that's what makes you different. So let's see it in detail. So your competition could be either direct competitors. Sometimes I receive many cases that they say, oh, I don't have any competitor. Maybe it doesn't sound you have any competitor, but they could be new participants that are thinking similar ideas like the one you are thinking or substitute products. So for instance, if, if I create, um, if I sell, I have a workshop for parties to do a flower arrangement, my competitors, will be even the bounce houses. So it's important that you know not only your direct competitors, but also the substitute products. Then it's very important that you do your SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis is when you check with, within your business and the competitors, I recommend that you do this exercise with your competitors too. What are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? So you question, you go first and you say, okay, what are the strengths of my business? What are the weaknesses of my business? What are the opportunities that I have? So what are the opportunities in the market and what are the threats on the market? A general rule is that the strengths and weaknesses are internal to the business and the opportunities and threats are external to the business. But you can do this analysis always to review your own business you can also review the competitors. Maybe you find that a competitor, one of your key competitors have a strong, strong weakness that you, in your case is a strength. So that's a huge opportunity for marketing. Or maybe that your competitors are not covering new opportunities. 
and you can do something that has uh, really good opportunities that uh, you can cover certain opportunities that are showing in the market. So I, this is fundamental to really understand what makes you different. Because at the end, what we want is to satisfy a need of a client or cure a pain of our clients, either if they're people or business, better than your competition. That's what really makes you unique. And that's what is called the unique selling proposition. This is why you should buy from me instead of my competition. So that's what you want. You want that people, when they have to take a decision or businesses, they realize, oh, this is really, let's call only this company. They are the best on solving this, this issue. Once we know the why, the who, and the what, you really need to have very clear where you are doing your marketing strategy. So the where is where your clients want to be reached. One problem that, we fa that I notice in many businesses is they try to push the business out there. But it's, what's important is not what I think they are, is how, where they are and where they want to be found. So when you are thinking about the where, it's fundamental that you think, okay, where is the geography? Where are they? Uh, for instance, uh, if you are marketing in internationally, let's say you are marketing, uh, you are selling your products in Colombia. Colombia doesn't have seasons, but but depending depending on where people live, it's very cold or it's warm. So you need to know where they are. If you are selling to the uh, Caribbean, that's a completely different market. If you are even in the US, if you are selling to Floridians, it's completely different than selling to people in New York, New York. So it's very important that you understand where is that you are selling and offering all these products. Then the market, you need to know what type of market it is. Is it an open market? Is it easy to get there? Is this a closed business? Do I need approval? approval? Um, if, for instance, if there are any realtors in here, you know that whenever someone is moving, um, buys a new house, you need the approval of the, of the um, management company many times or the building or all of that. And then the location, because maybe look, look only now what is happening to restaurants. Either you can have a front restaurant, you can have a ghost kitchen, you can be uh, just a com commissary or you can have a food truck. So location, it could be completely different. So if you are sourcing to restaurants, it will be very different the way you market to a food truck, than a restaurant, than a ghost kitchen. Um, so you need to understand what is that location and how do they behave. Once you know the location, we wanna know when. When do our clients want to be reached? Probably you have had the experience that you wake up on a Sunday morning, you are very relaxed, you're taking your coffee in the morning and suddenly the phone rings and is offering you something. It really takes you out of place. Of course, in theory, you cannot do it over on Sunday, but there are moments that you don't want to be reached. So you need to find out what is the key moments that your clients want to be reached. Also, when we talk about business, it's even more complex. There are many business like anchor institutions or government agencies that uh, you need to know how to market. You need to know their procurement and when is the right time. So that will be the lo location, but also the, the way that they wanna be rich. Is it through email? Is it a phone call? Is it personally? So you really need to know how, uh, the, how and when when to do it, is in the morning a good time, is in the day a good time, and so what do you prefer? So when is the is key? So if you're in the business to consumers, I really encourage you to do a day in a life. A day in a life is when you analyze your typical clients and you think, okay, they, this is a client that usually wakes up and exercise. And so they don't like to be bothered when they're exercising and then, they have breakfast, but they tend to meet with friends. And then, um, so you think, okay, what? So to connect with friends, maybe they use social media. So maybe while they're already 
out, out there talking to friends, maybe that's a good point to reach them. Then they go to work. No, they don't want to be bothered to, through the time they're at work. Or maybe the only way I can reach them if they're at work is maybe LinkedIn because there is no other option. They, maybe they have access or they don't want to use any other social tool until, or until I wait for lunchtime that maybe they're scrolling down in their Instagram and I can find them. So try to really discover a day in a life to really find when is a good moment to reach them. If you're in the business to business or business to government, also know the when. For instance, government, is very important that you know the budget seasoning. So not all the projects are open at the same time. You need to know when the budgets are open, when is the time for bid. So imagine even if you are not a prime contractor with government, but you are a subcontractor. So you wanna know when the projects are gonna happen. So when the primes are gonna be looking for contractors. So that's how when you market to those prime contractors. So always know the seasonality of your business. If you are, for instance, selling um, impact windows, of course, this is a big time to start offering your, your impact windows. And, and even from January, because maybe it's getting too late to change your windows, but uh, you need the shutters now. So really know your seasonality and know the calendar. Believe it or not, not all the businesses like to, or people like to be contacted every day of the week. If you have really paid attention, for instance, the mail, most of the uh, advertising mail comes on Tuesdays. So you, you have to pay attention. And maybe it's in my area that is on Tuesday. You can pay attention. Maybe in yours is another day. But it's, it's a specific case that you tend to receive certain information that they know people are not willing to receive. And timing the same. Is it a, something that I need to call at night, in the morning, at lunchtime? So when is the right moment? So when? So it's very important too. The sixth step is know how. How are we gonna reach? Or how our clients want to be rich? Remember, I always say, how our clients want to be rich. It's not where I think that I should reach them, it's that I need to find out either with surveys or calling my clients or doing some research that I find out that is um, where, when, and how they wanna be rich. So the how is all about the content, the message that you are giving them and the, the media channels you are using. So content is what you say, and media channels are everything related to the channel. So channels could be TV, radio, social media, a letter, a phone call, all of that are channels. So let, let's look some examples. The best way to think about all this um, combination of, of what we are gonna say to them is to really think about the seven Ps. In marketing, we had the four Ps, then they were five, and now there are seven. But I'll explain to you, even though there are seven, I brought you an example to make it easy to understand. So it's very important that you know what is your product. Once you know your product exactly, it's very important that you know what is the price. So how much are they willing to pay for your product or service? Then are you gonna make a promotion? Because maybe you need a promotion to attract certain clients. If you see usually new clients, we offer certain promotion. If you are in the food business, it's fundamental that people sample your food. If you are a gym, then maybe you need a promotion to engage people to at least attend one class for free. If you are a consultant, many times it's like the first session or the first analysis is for free. Even if you are a therapist, a language therapist, for instance, that's what happens. So what is that you're gonna, are you willing to give then to start connected with your leads? The place. So where are you gonna be, which place? Do you have a restaurant? Do you have an office? Or are you online? Are you working from home and then you connect via Zoom? It's interesting because this concept of place is moving what we call from places to platforms. The more that, and that's what COVID really accelerated. We move more from places to platforms. So if jobs continue to be more a distance work, then our work, we will invite people to platforms. We invite people to join our Zoom. 
not to come to our home if we are working from home, okay? Then the people. I'm wearing a, a uniform because I belong to a group. So I'm, I'm part of the SBDC. So I'm part of that marketing. I'm part of that brand. If you see Beverly also had a, a flyer on the, back, on the back that show that, and you couldn't see Veronica, but I noticed uh, when I talked to her that she also has flyers in her office that, um, I don't know if you noticed it, but um, that had the, this communication. So people, we are part of that marketing. Uh, then the process, how do we want people to connect in that marketing process, especially now that everything is connected to platforms. And then the physical evidence. What do they give to our clients? What do they do? For instance, for me today, what is the physical evidence is that I'm giving you my slides and I'm giving you a one pager that then you can fill out and start planning your marketing strategy. So that's the physical evidence. Let's see a case. So, I don't know how many of you have heard about Orange Theory, but it's a type of gym that everybody is like a circuit. So people do, there's a group of people running and then they switch to another type of exercise and then they switch to another type of exercise and they, they rotate. But what, what is really nice is that you are with other people. And if you like to see how they compete with other people, then, then it's cool. Usually you come, when you register, you, they give you like um, something that me, me measure. You see in the physical evidence that the lady has something in their in her arm, so it measures your um, heartbeat and how you're doing. And then at the end, there are some those monitors that track you in comparison to other people that are exercising. So let's analyze orange theory. So the product they created this product. They found that people like to exercise together. So you may not have a friend that will go with you to the gym, but if you start meeting your own gym pals all the time, it's cool to join them. So that's what they created. So you join your friends, and you join a group, and then you rotate with the group. The price, so of course they have created, usually as we see a lot now, like the, the cheapest price, the, what they call usually the best price and the value price that is an intermediate price and the premium price. So they created some packages and, and then you choose in this case, your time for how long and, and, and uh, how many sessions. The place in this case is a gym. So they have different gyms. As you can see, they tend to have this like windows is very open to see in many, most of the cases. Then they have the promotion. So the promotions are showing what, if you register, what can we give you? If you notice now lately online, there are a lot of services of gyms and exercise online. And they say text 50, 50, 50 and put the word fit. And now you will have these classes online for free for a, a, period, a specific period of time. That's promotion. What they are betting is that you really get hooked with that exercise and then you will pay to stay longer. As I say, people are part of your marketing strategy. So if it's only you, so how do you dress? How do you talk? How's your business card? All of that is people. How do you present yourself? Uh, in this case, as you can see, the trainer is in orange and it's, it connects to the whole image of the place. Uh, the process, in this case, um, when you have your, your monitor, then that connects also to your phone. So you can see your track and your progress all the time. So you not only see it on the screen, but you have it on your cell phone. My understanding, I haven't been there, but my understanding and what a lot of people tell me is that you can even make the appointments when you are going to the gym on the phone. And then the physical evidence, evidence is the whole experience. You see the monitor, the screens, the trainers managing a group of people, so that's the physical experience. So if you have a restaurant, imagine your physical experience is the menu, um, the, the, all the way the tables are set, the decoration, all of that. If you are exporting, how your product arrived. So let's say you are exporting. So what type of products are you exporting? How you price them? Do they pay the shipping separately or together? The place? They may not see you, but they, the place will be either a platform or via, you will be in your office and they will call you or set an appointment, have a Zoom. 
the promotion, even I know a lot of people that export that uh, are with us um, and they say that they tend to take advantage of the, um, you know, like the fairs and things like that to bring clients and bring promotions so they, they can sell more volume. The way they present, even if it's on the phone or online, that's the people, the process is what you use to the whole process. How do I connect? How do I pay? How do I submit my invoice? Uh, and the, the physical evidence is when the product arrives, how does it arrive? Is it good packaging? Is it good delivery? In this case, if we are exporting. So, so that's the seven piece. Once you have all of that, the, the seventh step is how much? How much are you willing to invest in your marketing? So definitely you need to create a budget. Many people ask me about a budget. There is no rule of thumb, even though the SBA says between for companies with less than $5 million in revenue, in gross revenue, that it should be around seven to 8%. And if you are a bigger company, it should be more like 10 to 12. Uh, but it's important that you set a budget based on what you wanna achieve. Maybe you can, you can only achieve, so, uh, make a little investment at a time, and then you can start growing your budget. Of course, the budget will depend what you do. If you, let's say, if you work with government, your budget is more attending all those meetings and be present there. So it's not that you can give presents to people in government or, but you can, um, that are in the, in the agencies, but you can, attend the meetings they go. So that will go part of your marketing budget. If they do events and you wanna to go to those events, that's part of your marketing budget. If you are in business to business, sometimes the best way to meet a business is going to trade shows. So what happened, how much does it cost you to go to those trade shows? Or um, if you are gonna do a, a, a webinar or an event for businesses, how much is that budget? So it will be very different if you sell cakes and you wanna advertise via social media because that's what people will reach you or you sell um, creams for the face. So that's a different type of client. Therefore the budget, you need to understand from the beginning we say in which type of business you are and that will define your budget. Then the cost per lead, you wanna know how much does it cost you to bring one lead. So that the way that is measured is that it, you, you take your marketing spend and you divide it by the leads that you acquire in a specific period. So if you, you take your marketing spend, let's say for a month, what you spend in marketing, and then you divide it by the leads that you got, and then you will know what is your cost per lead. The return on investment or the ROI is how you measure how much you, the, of your investment, how much it became, yes, that's why it says return on investment, it came back. The, the basic formula is sales growth um, minus your marketing cost divided by your marketing cost times 100. It will give you the percentage, but you don't need to memorize this formula, formulas. If you go to invest, investopediaonline.com, they will give you all the formulas that you need. So, but it's important that you plan your budget. You don't want to spend, spend more than you can. You want to be focused on what you can really sell. You can really do in your marketing and based on your expectation that you want to return. Finally, the eighth step is measure your success. As I say from the beginning, it's very important that you have your business goals. So then you have your marketing goals and then you should be able to make, you should, no, no, you should be able, no, you should measure your efforts to know if what you did, it really paid off. So you, you really need to measure what you did. So I invested this amount of money in marketing for this period. This was what I was expecting to get. Did I get it? What else do I need to tweak? How do I need to uh, improve it? So the typical in marketing, the minimum you should be checking are your sales revenue, the leads you're getting, and the cost per acquisition per lead. So that's the minimum you should do. But if you, anyway, if you Google key performance indicator for marketing, you will get a lot of ideas on what you can measure. Don't, you don't need to get really overwhelmed measuring everything, but measure the key things. And nowadays, many of the online platforms, they even have their own analytics. 
So you can use that, those analytics to know how you are doing. Either because you are doing it yourself or because you hire someone to do it, you need to know what is the objective and what is the, the results. As I mentioned, I work 10 years, even though I'm an industrial designer, but I worked 10 years in, adver in an advertising agency. It's a huge difference when people really track their efforts, but you need to know where you are going to track your efforts. So I then I really recommend that you set your goal and you measure it and, and be consistent. You may achieve it. Maybe you super achieve the goal and that's great. Maybe you achieve it, which is great, but maybe you didn't, you, you, you do not achieve the goal, but it's important so you are measuring and you can make changes and improve. Marketing in many cases is, especially at the beginning, is, is a little bit of trial and error, but that's why you have to measure. Because maybe I do a test, I think this client, that this type of clients want to be rich in this way, but it didn't work. So I need to do more research and change my strategy. This is the one pager that I'm giving to you. So this is a summary of everything we did. So I will give you in a way, in a minute, the way to download. So what I want you to put is your business information. So you will put your company name, your product or service and your date. And then why? So you should describe your business objective and your marketing objective. Then who? Your target market. Who are your clients? In which business you are? Business to business, business to consumer, business to government. What? So who are your competitors, your capabilities and unique, your unique selling proposition? What makes you different? Where? Where are your clients located? The geography, the marketing, and the location. When? When should I market? Remember the day in a life, the seasonality, the calendar, and the timing. How? What creative materials and media channels do I, am I going to use? And think about the seven piece. Since you already have, you will have the slides, you can fill out all of these. And then how much? Your budget, your cost per leads, your ROI, and then the KPIs, how you're going to measure. And Remember, the measurement should be aligned with the time that you are setting your business objective and your marketing objectives. So I'm gonna stop here for a second. If you scan the top QR code, you will be able to download the canvas that I just showed you. If you scan the slides QR code, you will get all the slides that I just presented to you. So I'm gonna wait two seconds. Maybe you wanna take just a screenshot of this slide so then you can download it, okay? In our, anyway, Veronica is gonna send an email with all the information. So you will get it, you can have it twice. It's just that since this, present, since this presentation is being recorded, I also want that if even people that watch it later has access to all the templates. Okay, so let's continue. So this is your marketing strategy, and that's how you should start your marketing strategy. Let me see if we have questions. I'm open to hear questions. Please let me know your industry and your client. Thank you so much, Adriana, for that wonderful Thank presentation. You. As we promised, this is the moment of truth, folks. If you have questions, I see several questions in, in the Q&A. Feel free to put your questions in. Adriana, the first question is, what is that website? Um, Investor.com? Ah, um, Investopedia. Investopedia, like encyclopedia, but Investopedia. That's okay, the one. Okay, Investopedia.com. Uh -huh. Second question, Adriana, can you give an example of an objective and goal for selling a product and specifically how can it be measured? Okay, um, since I don't know your industry or your client, let's say you sell uh, cosmetics. So you, you, want, you, you receive all these cosmetics, probably they, 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 it's a beautiful product, but you need to really think on a, a clear goal. So let's say you say, okay, my marketing goal will be to get every week two new clients, that your business goal. So my business goal is to have eight new clients a, a month. So that means that by the end of the year, I will have about 80, uh, over 90 clients, uh, new clients. 
Of course, to get those new clients, that means that to get two that convert, I need uh, maybe to contact, uh, let's say eight on a, on, a, on, a, um, on a weekly basis. Or even or let's say I will make 10 calls to try to convert two every week. So that, that will give you the number of calls that you need to do on a year. Then, okay, those clients, how do I convert all that to marketing? So, okay, I want to convert this amount of money by the end of the year in, with my marketing efforts. I want to reach basically these uh, women, maybe your products are for elderly, for mature skins. So I'm going to reach at least uh, of that, all those clients that I'm going to get, that we say over 90 clients in a year, at least 60% of those clients, I want them to be of mature skin. That means women over 40. So you start building what you want to, so to kind of visualize and dream. I, I receive easily 10, uh, no, 20 new clients or 20 companies, uh, small business a week. And I see that the most successful businesses are the ones that can visualize themselves in the future. So that's why you need to do your business strategy. And then you set your business, your marketing goals too. So when you can really see where you want to go, then you, 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 you have the clear path of where to go. And then you have to measure. At the end of the period, if it was a year, did I achieve the plus 90 clients? Uh, of those 90 clients, were those at least 60% with mature skin? So that's how you measure. You need to make, you imagine where you want to be and then set your measurements. Okay? Thank you. We have another question from Brian McDonald, and he is in Gainesville, Adriana. He is an engineering professional services consulting business. He says, you mentioned for a small business, the marketing budget should be seven to 8%. He wants to know seven to 8% of what? Seven to 8% of your gross sales. In your case, because you are in business to business, uh, the key element, and I, I also teach at the Startup FIU uh, cohort of construction, so I know that, uh, you really need to be very specific of who do you wanna reach. So in, in business to business and in construction, you need to know who are your key targets. And construction has very specific way to connect. So in your case, you have to be very specific. You have to have your capability statement. You need to attend the meetings where you know, uh, those businesses meet. You need to follow up. You need to be where they are. So yes, as I said, that's a number seven to 8%, but be very careful depending on your business, how, to ma how much is needed, okay? Okay, we have time for two more questions. Um, yeah. Asia Claremont, I own a home health agency. We provide home health services. It has been very challenging to get clients since the main source of re referrals are hospitals, social workers, doctors, et cetera. How can I effectively get through those gatekeepers? Yeah, I, I, I understand your pain also because COVID made it worse we have clients that we help with that model and and it's been difficult i think the challenge of that business is that they were you the idea the business was more on a one-to-one -one basis in a very relationship base now because you cannot go to hospitals so you cannot uh, you cannot really meet the assistant and the doctor and then sell your service but you can Always think, remember, as I said at the beginning, the pains and the gains of your clients. So think of these doctors and these nurses that they need to offer the, the, the service. So in your case, they may how uh, you know, a client goes, that, that patient needs more assistance, they need to inform them where to go. So the more material you can provide, maybe you can provide flyers that they can be to clients, or uh, just say that you are willing to connect with them. Even if you give conferences to families or you create webinars, you may need to try to connect more directly to, to the end client and who takes the decision. In many cases with patients, and if you are working with the elderly group, it, are they kids that are now in their 40s plus, the ones taking the decisions? So you, how can you educate those children about how you can help their parents? 
So, so that's another way to reach them. Next question, an educational consultant looking to secure governmental contracts. Might you be able to share marketing examples for educational trainers looking to earn business opportunities with the state and federal government? So, um, and that not only goes to government, but you are talking with a group of partners, as you could see all of us from Florida, that we can help you. In our case, specifically the SBDC, we can give you consulting that it has no cost for you. One of the areas that we are very strong is government consulting. When you are facing to get into government consulting, there are definitely, definitely some certifications that you need to get, and then really understand how you market with government. So you have to have pieces like your capability statement, know the agencies that you wanna get in. If you wanna work specifically with the schools, many of the schools areas have their own trainings. So I recommend that you check. Um, I'm in Miami, so I know more the information about Miami, but if you contact the local SBDC, they will be willing to help you with all those contacts. And then you will learn how to market with them. Usually it's a lot in, they have meetings, and sessions, but I would recommend that you start with the specific trainings that they do in the school system for, for suppliers. Okay, we have time for one final question. Would you please give an example of how to convert leads and considerable marketing efforts in the travel planning and event planning industry? So, um, that's a more advanced class and I don't know if you're gonna have it, but usually you get overall leads. There are two ways to do it. For the business to business, and, and I'm just gonna give a name. If you're doing business to business, I highly recommend you look something that is account-based marketing. Account-based marketing is a way to do marketing for business. It's, very, it's a very successful system. If you Google, you will find a lot of examples. But if you are doing it in your case of events, you will need to know and, and travel. Are you selling to business or are you selling to directly to consumers? So if you are selling to business, one thing that you will need to do is account-based marketing, acquire accounts. But if you are doing it to business to consumers, that's a different funnel. That means that you get a lot of leads and you need to kind of, I will say, plan your playbook. So these people get my first lead. So they're hooked with the same me first message. So when they get this message, what is the, what I want them to do next? And what is what I want them to do next? So it's like playing uh, a, a soccer game or a football game, plan your playbook. So what do you want so you can drive your leads down to the funnel? Thank you so much. Thank no. you, Adriana, for that wonderful information. We asked Thank you, Mary. We asked you guys to bring the energy and you did just that. We had 28 cities represented, five states, three countries. And I cannot not mention, we had several sororities and fraternities, Alpha Kappa Alpha, the Iota Lambda chapter, Kappa Alpha Psi, Phi Beta Sigma, Gators. You guys brought the energy. Thank you so much. We always end with our strategic partners, Florida SBDC Network. We couldn't do this without them, the Department of Management Services and our resource partners. We partner folks with minority chambers around the state, uh, urban league chapters. We couldn't do it without you guys. You guys are our feet on the ground and we appreciate you. Next session up is June 30th with Mr. Taylor Kennedy of the Florida SBDC Network, maximizing your presence online. Everybody wants to hear about social media. This is the time. If you guys could do me a favor, this is good information. Don't keep it to yourself. I want every person to commit to telling one of your colleagues your family, friends, tell them about the Minority and Small Business Bootcamp. We bring the webinar, you guys bring the energy. Next week, we wanna see more cities, more counties, more fraternities and sororities. We look forward to it. Thank you so much, have a great day.